Right, so for as much as the focus of military news right now is all about Israel and Gaza, this time last year, of course, it was Ukraine and Russia dominating the headlines, wasn't it? That war still very much going on. It just doesn't make headline news so much now with Netanyahu making Putin look like an out-and-out pacifist by comparison. Revelations that have just come out, however, imply that that war could and should have been over more than a year ago now. 18 months ago now. Could have been nipped in the bud early because a deal was put on the table. A peace deal. Putin had apparently accepted. Only for the US and UK to come in here as well and scupper the entire thing. Is there a war anywhere these days that the US and the UK, their ever loyal lackeys, it seems, can't make worse? Is the dealing in death business really so lucrative that human life no longer seems to register with these countries and the people that lead them? Right, so here we are again. Another war, another unwelcome, unhelpful intervention by the West. It would seem the US and UK having managed to keep the Ukraine war going this time. But last spring, apparently it could have been settled and ended. So what happened then and where has this come from then, Damo? Well, I should tell you. Let's begin by covering what was said by a former Ukrainian peace negotiator, Ambassador Oleksandr Chalyi at the Geneva Centre of Security Policy event held just yesterday. He came out with a couple of notable points on the prospect of a peace settlement in Ukraine from once upon a time. He said, I was at that moment in the group of Ukrainian peace negotiators. We negotiate with the Russian delegation for practically two months. In March and April 2022, on a possible peace settlement agreement between Ukraine and Russia. We concluded the so-called Istanbul communique, and we were very close in the middle of April, the end of April, to finalise our war with some peace settlement. For some reason, it was postponed. But to my mind, Putin, this is my personal view, in one week after the start of his aggression on 24th of February last year, very quickly understood he made a mistake and tried to do everything possible to conclude an agreement with Ukraine. And the Istanbul communique, it was his personal decision to accept the text of this communique. So he managed to find a very real compromise. So Putin really wanted to reach some peaceful settlement with Ukraine. Now this from one of Ukraine's peace negotiators. Frankly, if anyone else had said this, they might have invited accusations of being some kind of a Russian stooge, perhaps. But this was one of the guys in the room. And although, yes, part of what he says is personal opinion, not all of it is, certainly not the gist of it all. Functionally, what he said there, the deal that was alluded to, that Istanbul communique, was a 10-point plan for peace. But all boiled down, it amounted to saying that the war could end if Ukraine agreed to remain neutral and also agreed not to join NATO. Now, bear in mind, this was just a couple of months after the war began, in February. It could have been nipped in the bud quickly and easily, so what happened? Well, according to another Ukrainian peace negotiator, the US and the UK happened. Leading the delegation in these negotiations with Russia was a chap called David Arkhamia, who is the parliamentary leader of Volodymyr Zelensky's Servant of the People Party. And he has also gone on record as saying the Russians promised peace in exchange for neutrality. But actually, they in Ukraine didn't believe them. So where did the US and UK come into this then, Damo? What was their involvement? You said it was their fault. This didn't come to pass in the title of this video. Well... Ukraine, as is well documented by now, basically a puppet government of the US. A US-backed coup installed helpful leaders there and allowed the US to station troops there. I've spoken about this in past videos. Right on Russia's border, as that would be. NATO, in effect, on Russia's doorstep, as much of this conflict has all been about. As for the UK's involvement, well, here's what David Arkamia had to say about the Russian proposal of neutrality and not joining NATO. First, in order to agree to this point, it is necessary to change the Constitution. Our path to NATO is written in the Constitution. Secondly, there was no confidence in the Russians that they would do it. This could only be done if there were security guarantees. We could not sign anything, step away, everyone would relax there, and then they would invade even more prepared, because they have in fact gone in unprepared for such a resistance. Therefore, we could only explore this route when there is absolute certainty that this will not happen again. There is no such certainty. Moreover, when we returned from Istanbul, Boris Johnson came to Kiev and said that we would not sign anything with them at all, and let's just fight. Boris Poxy Johnson! Up to his neck in sleaze allegations as he was, he was ever so fond of a trip or two to Kiev to see his brand new bestie slash distraction Zelensky, and all the promises of aid and support that came with it to give Johnson a day or two of positive headlines before yet another party gate calamity picture dropped or some such and so forth. Would have been terrible for him personally if the war was suddenly over, wouldn't it? Did he keep all this going? Did he dismiss these peace negotiations, this deal on the table, to purely serve himself? Well, we can only speculate on that. 
But putting himself first, let's face it, he's spent his whole life doing just that, hasn't he? Now, it's at this point that Arakamia said no to Johnson forcing Ukraine's hand on this. But then being Zelensky's man, you would have to appreciate that he would say that. And that this guy's not impartial either. However, there are yet more contributions from other figures in authority that back this up. Like this quote from the former German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, a guy who has done very well out of Russia himself since he ceased being leader of Germany, it should be noted. But he said, At the peace negotiations in Istanbul in March of 2022 with Rustem Umarov, the Ukrainian Minister of Defence, the Ukrainians did not agree on peace because they were not allowed to. For everything they discussed, they first had to ask the Americans. I had two talks with Umarov, then a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Putin, and then with Putin's envoy. Umarov opened the conversation with greetings from Zelensky. He also said that Ukraine does not want NATO membership. He also said that Ukraine wants to reintroduce Russian in the Donbass. But in the end, nothing happened. My impression was that nothing could happen, because everything else was decided in Washington. That was fatal, because the result will now be that Russia will be tied more closely to China, which the West should not want. So what do you think? There are no truly impartial sources here, but there are several pointing to the US and UK as screwing this up. That's a common denominator here. A point carried through. According to Canadian political scientist Ivan Kachanovsky, the existence of this peace deal framework and the failure of it ultimately at Western hands came not just from Schroeder or Arakamia, but also from other officials close to Zelensky, Putin himself, the Turkish First Minister, and ex-Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett as well. I could have dug up those quotes as well, but I think I've made the point that I wanted to make in this video. And that questions need to be asked of the UK and the US at this point. Because the UK and the US at one point last year, or still even now, depending on whose accounts you choose to listen to, didn't want this war to end for some reason, though it could have very quickly. There would have been no need for so many Ukrainian refugees to be created or so many people killed. We here took people into our homes, people up and down this country, made a place for Ukrainians in their homes, displaced as they were, when actually our Prime Minister at the time may have helped engineer that we had to do that. Wanting a fight, apparently, but for his own ends? Who would put it past Johnson to do that? All whilst his government, you might remember, wouldn't put public money up to take in people. We did that ourselves. And now what is the consequence of that? So many Ukrainians have ended up homeless here on our streets as a result. Ukrainians are four times more likely to be homeless in the UK than anyone else now. They might never have been made homeless at all if the war had been ended. One other feature of that Istanbul communique worth touching on was the denazification of Ukraine as part of that deal with Russia, put into glaring context as a Ukrainian issue when Zelensky went to Canada and gave a standing ovation to a literal Ukrainian Nazi along with Justin Trudeau, which if you missed it at the time or were simply unaware of just how Nazified Ukraine is, you should absolutely watch this video here next and educate yourself and learn a thing or two. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.